<clears throat> Hi, I'm Pete Gerlach. I'm the author of the nonprofit Break the Cycle website, which is eight self improvement lessons that I've learned from 31 years of being a family therapist. Lesson four in the website has to do with improving your relationships. This video is one of a series uh, from and about lesson four. And in this one, I want to alert you to a very common dynamic that causes stress <clears throat> in typical families or organizations. Uh, it was originally called the Karpman Drama Triangle back in the 1950s or 60s, after a man who originally discovered it. It has since become known as a relationship triangle. A Persecutor, Victim, Rescuer, PVR, Triangle. It takes place <clears throat> between three people, and each person unconsciously chooses a role, like someone in a play. Uh, the first role is Persecutor. And this role is characterized by picking on, criticizing, uh, nagging, blaming um, the second the person in the second role which is called the victim <clears throat> so the persecutor uh, focuses on the victim and points out mistakes or errors or bad traits and generally hassles the victim the third role <clears throat> is taken by a person who allies with the victim and comes to quote rescue them the rescuer defends the victim against the persecutor's criticisms or actions. So we have three people unconsciously. One is attacking, blaming, or persecuting, so to speak, the victim, and then a rescuer steps in <clears throat> and starts to protect the victim. Does this sound familiar at all? A very common uh, manifestation of this is often in typical families where one parent is viewed as being more strict, more severe than the other parent, who is more lax, more humanitarian, more forgiving. And the child is often caught in the middle between these two different parenting styles. Now, that frequently causes a relationship triangle. The stern parent is the persecutor, you broke curfew, you're grounded for a week. The rescuer may be the other parent who says, oh, come on, that's awfully severe. How about grounding for one day? The child is the victim saying, I, have to, I can't help it, I can't defend myself. <clears throat> this sounds pretty normal, right? So what's wrong with triangles? They happen everywhere, all the time, in all organizations. What's wrong with them? What's wrong is they generate conflict, self-doubt, lower self-esteem, they cause arguments, uh, and in the case of families, they lower families' nurturance level. That means fewer people get fewer needs met most of the time. <coughs> so. Relationship triangles are problematic. Frequently, people are not unaware, they're not aware that uh, these triangles are happening. And, in my observation as a therapist, people, once they identify a triangle, they don't know how to get out of them or prevent them. Here are some things you can do <coughs> to uh, release a triangle, dissolve it, or prevent them. The very first step is to be aware. Notice what's going on in your family, in your home, in your organization. Be alert for who's persecutor, victim, rescuer, triangles. When you spot one, don't judge anyone as wrong or bad because these are normal human dynamics. No one is a bad person here. <clears throat> so be aware, spot triangles. When you do, 
assess are the adults who are involved in the triangle ruled by their true selves? Are they guided by their true selves? If you don't know what that means, study lesson one in the Break the Cycle website. That will show you about normal personalities and whether they are guided by a wise resident true self or a well-meaning myopic false self. So be aware. Notice if the adults involved in the triangle are ruled by a true self or a false self. If any adult is ruled by a false self, you have a bigger problem than a triangle. <clears throat> the problem is getting the adult to recognize their true self is disabled and to become motivated to free and enable their true self. So check for true selves and false selves. Uh, if everybody's true self is in, in charge, the next thing you do is openly acknowledge among the three of you, hey gang, we got a triangle that presumes that each person understands what you just learned in this video. What is a triangle and why are they a problem? <clears throat> so simply acknowledge them. Use your own language. You know what we got, folks. Or guess who's the persecutor? Or I'm playing the victim here. Acknowledge this without shame, without guilt. And be open about it. All right? Alert everybody that you got a triangle. <clears throat> Often, triangles form over values conflicts. Do you know what a values conflict is? There's a video that explains it. Um, basically, it says, uh, here's an example, I like red meat, you're a vegetarian. What are we going to have for dinner? That's a values conflict. No one's right or wrong. You have differences in preferences. Triangles often form around values conflicts. So once you spot a triangle, look for values conflicts. If you have a values conflict, agree together either to agree to disagree, uh, okay we'll have spaghetti tonight instead of meat or fish, uh, agree to disagree, or if you can, use the skill of problem solving, which you can learn about in lesson two. <clears throat> Also check for loyalty conflicts. These are common in many families, especially low nurturance families. A loyalty conflict occurs when one person is caught in the middle between two people they like and respect and want to please. This happens, for instance, when one child feels caught in the middle between their two parents. Uh, I feel loyal to my mom, I feel loyal to my dad, each of them are telling me uh, side with me against the other person. No matter who I choose, I feel bad. Someone's a winner, someone's a loser. Ah, what do I do? This is a loyalty conflict. They're very common. Be aware when they happen, and if your triangle involves two committed adults in a primary relationship. Look at the adult's priorities. One way of resolving loyalty conflicts, if it involves people who are married or committed to each other, is for the adults to review their priorities. In my experience as a therapist, working with hundreds and hundreds of troubled couples, what I've observed is couples work best over time if each adult says, my first priority is my own holistic health and my dignity. That comes before anything. My second priority, except in emergencies, is my primary, primary relationship. I prize that highly. I will do what it takes to preserve my relationship. Everything else comes third. I repeat suggests this priority scheme to you when triangles involved primary partners. <clears throat> Check your priorities. Use the skills you'll find in lesson two, communication skills. 
um, put your true selves in charge, that's lesson one, and add other uh, wisdoms that you can glean from lesson four in my nonprofit website, which is about improving your relationships. I hope you find this uh, idea of triangles meaningful, useful, clear. The next time you have a conflict in your family or committee or, or <coughs> organization, check to see if you've got a triangle and try out these solutions. Thanks for watching.